is a 21 letter word for the state fish of Hawaii? <laughs> well, that one's easy. How would you know that? It's a huma huma. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that was just totally another tree branch. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a tree. Live through alien invasions much? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> what are you up to today? Um, I was just going to monitor the These radio. These are getting really old. I'm sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> what are you up to? These um, are getting old, though. Yeah, they, they're not the best. Um, I was just going to monitor the radio and stay on watch for a oh, little okay. while today. If you, if you get anybody and go to respond... I'm kind of under the impression that maybe that thing that happened yesterday was mm -hmm. because I tried to transmit at a high power level. So maybe, I don't know, if you respond, just keep it on the low power setting because, I don't know, it might be connected to Okay. That. So. Yeah, think, thanks. I don't want to yeah. bring any of those guys you over here. <laughs> um, actually, before I um, go on watch, is it possible that I could take a shower? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, we want to keep the water... That we've got is like drinking water but i could I, actually i've been meaning to i can run out i'll get some water from the stream and kind of it'll be clean enough but you know something good for for bathing so okay i can do that Th that's no no worries awesome at all. thank you <sighs> today's day 11 since this whole fiasco started and i'm pretty sure about that number i'm pretty sure it's 11 before I started recording, couldn't remember whether it's 11 or 12. I think 11, though. I should probably start keeping track of that. I mean, just to know what day of the year it is. I mean, you know, so you know when the seasons are starting. I mean, well, just look around, like right here. I, I mean, it was like two days ago, major snow and ice storm. And then last night, there was crazy rain. It melted pretty much everything. I mean, there's a few little patches here and there, but uh, melted pretty much everything. I didn't capture any of that water, though, uh, because I'd already dis dismantled my... Uh, my water collection, my, my roof collection system and everything, because, you know, we're into the time of year when I could get freezes and that would burst all the pipes on that thing, so I wasn't able to take advantage of any of that, but I still need water. I mean, that's the thing in a crisis is you got kind of two things, safety, security, and acquiring resources for yourself. You know, doing the best I can with the safety and security <laughs> part of it, and, uh, and now i got to get some water. Uh, what this is right here, I had installed this when I built my house. Uh, this is just a PVC pipe that goes down like four feet into the ground or so. And there's a little stream that comes along here. And actually, when I first got here, I just kind of sat to kind of listen, see if I could hear any people in the area or anything, know whether it was safe to kind of do this. And it's just really peaceful right here. And it was nice, I mean, just taking that moment, just listening to the babbling brook and the forest around, you know. I don't know, it's kind of grounding again to, uh, to be out here. The water doesn't know that aliens have invaded. <laughs> so, that was kind of nice. But anyway, I need to get some of this water. Um, uh, specifically, this is just going to be for bathing and stuff like that. We still have the uh, hundreds of gallons of water in the house for drinking. Uh, eventually, that's going to run out. Uh, and, you know, we could acquire drinking water from here. But for right now, this is just for, you know, hygiene kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, I've got this PVC pipe that goes down into the ground. Again, only four feet, so the water out of here is not safe for drinking or anything. The reason I did this is because, you know, whenever you're camping, you, you might bring a, a water pump or something and you, you know, kind of throw it into the stream. There's always kind of, uh, you know, muck and things like that at the bottom. I made this so that water can kind of accumulate in here, uh, kind of clean itself out, have some of the particulates come out. And then if I wanted to further filter this for drinking, it, you know, I wouldn't be clogging up my filter so much. What I'm going to be using here is just, uh, this is a simple pump that is uh, for like travel trailer stuff. I think like pumping anti antifreeze into your uh, your camper or whatever. I bought it for creating a siphon uh, to start the siphon in my goldfish pond uh, in my greenhouse. Uh, that's why I bought it. But right now I'm able to use it to get some water out of here. So I've just got a, a jug here and this hooks up here. This is not the best pump in the world. You gotta, you gotta kind of pump it pretty quickly to get it going. There we go. But it works pretty fast. And I like the fact 
that I'm out here and I'm pumping this stuff quickly so I can get back to the house and then if I wanted to make it drinking water safe, because if you've ever used like a drinking water pump, you know, you have, it takes a lot longer. You know, the, the water doesn't move through it quickly. This way I can get in and out of here, out and then back into the house where I can, you know, pump it more safely. Yes, you gotta get it going again. Makes you appreciate just having running water in your house, I think. I brought the warm water that I heated up out on the parabolic solar cooker here into the house and now I'm ready to wash myself up with it. Now there's a couple different ways that I could do that. One of the more, uh, you know, kind of normal feeling, classic ways of doing that would be to use a solar shower. Uh, this one here holds about four gallons of water and in, on a hot sun... On a hot sunny day, you could just take this, fill it up with cold water, and lay it out in the sun, and it'd be a nice, comfortable, warm shower after not too much time. That wasn't going to work today, though, because it's kind of chilly out, and things like this will tend to lose about as much heat as they're, they're gaining on a cold day. Uh, but that wouldn't necessarily even be a problem, because I could just take this and take hot water, pour it right in here, and then I could... Uh, you know, use it that way. I could heat up the water like I did with a parabolic solar cooker or over a campfire or with a wood stove or anything like that. So that's not what's inhibiting me from using this today. The reason I'm not using this today is it just uses more water than I really feel that I need to use. Uh, especially because of the spouts on a lot of these things. A lot of the spouts on these are not the best spouts. They're kind of like an off-on design. Here's off, here's on, and a lot of times I find that they really spray a lot of water, more than you need, and then you end up pissing through your water you know, maybe before you're done, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just find them kind of inconvenient in that regard. You're constantly putting it on and off, on and off, uh, and I, I would just have to collect more water, and have to heat more water, and I don't really need to bother with that. So what I'm going to be doing... Hey, today, I'm just going to go run out on some patrols. What are you doing? Well, I was just... You know what? I don't even want to know. Okay, yeah, well, anyway, instead of that is I'm just going to be using a washcloth to clean myself up here in the tub. Now, I've got my pot of water, I've got my washcloth, and inside the tub, I've put another smaller tub that I'm going to be standing in, and that's going to collect a lot of the water that I'm using, so I'll be able to reuse that water later, because it's going to be kind of like a soapy water. I'll be able to use that water to do laundry or whatever else I may want to do with it. But water is a precious resource, even here in New England. Once you get it, you might as well use it for as much as you possibly can. And uh, I'm going to collect it, and... I can at the very least water my plants with it. So I'm going to hop in here. I'm going to keep my bathing suit on for this because, I mean, Monica's walking around. And honestly, if I ever do have a chance of posting these videos someday, if I took it off, I'd have to post it on, like, a porn website. And what self-respecting prepper would post on a porn website? So I'm going to step right in here and just dip the, the uh, washcloth in. And what I usually do is kind of start from the top. And, and then go down from there because now the water is kind of going down my body. It's pre-moistening everything below me. Normally I would do this with the shower curtain closed so I'm not splashing outside the tub here. But um, I'm not going to do that because then you couldn't see anything. It wouldn't be much of a video. I wanted to interrupt my sexy shower scene so that I could share with people what Monica and I have been doing in terms of flushing the toilet. You know, we go outside as much as possible, but in the middle of the night it's kind of uncomfortable to do that. So we have been using the toilet, but we're not flushing it with the regular flushing device because that would refill the tank and be flushing with clean, fresh drinking water. And where that's kind of a precious resource right now, I don't want to be doing that. What we have been doing is just flushing it with buckets of water. This is an empty five gallon bucket uh, and I've been filling this up from, you know, bathing or, you know, spit from, you know, brushing your teeth or, you know, just outside. You, you can put snow in here or rain in here or whatever, pumping it up out of the creek. Uh, but just, you know, filling it up with dirty water you can't really use for much else and I'm using that to flush the toilet. I've actually been kind of uh, amazed with how easily a toilet flushes with just dumping water in. And I'll show you just in a moment how I do that. But uh, oftentimes, like, you know, there might be something that's placed into the toilet that you might think, well, that might require a couple flushes, you know, under normal circumstances. Well, these buckets are so powerful at shooting water down. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's actually quite amazing how powerful a bucket is. And all, all, all you do, this bucket here is full of water, is lift up both seats so you don't splash. That's courteous. Pick it up and... And 
and that's it. Uh, once it's flushed, I'll oftentimes take a little bit extra and just pour it into the the uh, bowl so that there's something in there. But uh, there's really not much to it. You pour water in and it creates the gravity siphon, it clears the whole thing out, and it's been working really, really well. All right, so let's get back to that sexy shower scene. Cool. And the, one of the key reasons why it's important to be using warm water here, and I just put a tiny bit of soap in here, just as a, a little bit of a, uh, uh, an antiseptic because this water was just, you know, pumped out of the ground and also uh, because it, uh, you know, will help to dissolve oils off my body a little better. Um, one of the important reasons for having it be warm water is because you're going to be able to, uh, oh, that feels awesome. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, dissolve away a lot of your body's oils a lot better than, than cold water. Uh, also, uh, cold water kind of closes up your pores and everything, and it's good to kind of let your pores stay open so you can flush them out and it'll avoid all sorts of skin diseases. Because keeping yourself clean and hygienic isn't just a... Uh, a question of you know feeling good it's also comes down to a question of you know whether or not you're gonna get rashes and all sorts of other sorts of things I think us uh, people in the modern uh, you know Western world that are just used to taking a shower every day kind of forget that it also kind of serves a, a, a health purpose because when you, you skip showers for long enough bad things can start happening to your skin and those bad things can have real-life implications beyond just like feeling a little itchy or, or whatever so Oh, this feels really nice. All right, so uh, I'm collecting a lot of water down in the bottom, but is, uh, if you can see in the pot here, I, I'm not using very much water. I'm kind of almost done washing myself up, and I've probably used, I don't know, maybe a cup of water. Yeah, I'm going to wash down there, too. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a, just a very efficient way of getting yourself clean. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use probably all this water just to kind of use it up. Or maybe I'll share some of it with Monica. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I don't feel like I really need it. And this is just, like I said, like a liter, maybe two liters of water. And it feels like way overkill. And in a world where everything has such razor sharp margins now, with we only have so much food, we only have so much water, we only have so much this, so much that, it feels kind of nice to have a surplus once in a while. Once you do get your body clean, it's important to keep it clean by not jumping back into the same dirty clothes that you were wearing earlier. If you do, it's sort of like sleeping with someone you find out has an STD. You go to the STD clinic, get it taken care of, and then you sleep with the same goddamn person again. Wash your clothes. And that's what we're going to do right here in front of me. I have two buckets. Uh, one of them has soapy water. One of them has more clean water. Uh, and here's a pile of laundry. And we're going to be moving things through here and cleaning them up. Washing laundry is really not that big a deal. Of all the things that you know, are kind of a pain in the butt when, you know, the machinery breaks down, the grid goes down and all that. Washing laundry is actually pretty, pretty easy and straightforward. First thing I'm going to do is just take laundry, put it in here, get them pre-soaking. Down in there like that. Now you could have like a wand or something like that, you know, to kind of, you know, compress things, kind of stir it around in there. But I'm just going to use my hands because they're right at the end of my arms. So I'm just taking them, kind of squeezing them around here, getting all the water to go through it. And I'm not really that worried about doing an incredibly awesome job of washing these. I just want to get kind of the bulk of everything off and kill any germs that are in there. That's why I have some soapy water in here. And again, this one's going to be used to kind of rinse them off afterwards. And this is pretty much it. I mean, I, I feel good at this point that everything's pretty much, you know, gotten cleaned off and everything. There was no dirt or mud or, on any of these. I'm really just sanitizing them and washing off some of the dead skin cells. So I'm going to take out one right here. Of course, I could go longer and they'd be a little bit better. But in terms of safety, I feel good about these right now. I'll take this one here, squeeze it out, and drop it into the rinse bucket. And I'll continue through with the rest of these. Handkerchiefs, always good to have. Nylon is a great uh, material for, you know, camping and anything like that, because when you do wash things like this, nylon dries really quickly. Let's see, what are those? Huh. I don't remember wearing these. Hmm. All right, so that all goes in there. And now I'm just rinsing them off, just getting the soap off of it. I'll take the nylon out first. Squeeze it all out. And... I'm just got a rack right here next to me. There we go. 
throw it up like that. I could put these out on a clothesline or something, but I'm just kind of doing it in here. I don't want to necessarily have clothes, fresh clothes out on the line. I think that would attract attention. So I'm kind of doing it in the greenhouse here. So I'll get this one up out of here. Okay, I'm gonna throw this one up and then what I think I wanna do is go and, and check on that chip outside just to, I mean, I'm getting kind of used to it, but I feel like I should check it out. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, oh, there's one there. Oh, oh, wow. Wow, okay. We haven't seen that many before. Just another ordinary laundry day. Man, you know, this used to be exciting, and I'm not really getting that anymore. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.